uh, Rich and Judy on the couch with us this morning to talk about uh, lots of things. And uh, the most exciting thing you're here to talk about is your the launch of your book club. Yeah, mm. Rich and Judy book club is back. It was, it was always going to come back. I mean, um, we, we couldn't do it when, when we left the last digital thing that we were doing because they had the, the rights to it. And it, then we got them back again this year. And we've just taken our time. And we, we had a long sort of series of meetings about whether we should do it as a television program. Mm. And we decided in the end not to pitch it to anybody because we don't think that, that book clubs on television work. They did on, on our talk show, they did on the Channel 4 show, um, because it was what we call hammocked, like on a show like this. It would just be once a week for about 12 minutes. So people didn't have to sort of sit down and get half an hour of books. You know, it was just a 12-minute item once a week for two months of the year. Um, so we just, and, and when we went to our digital channel, which had incredibly low viewing figures being, being digital, we did the book club on that, but it still worked. And, you know, the book still got into the top ten and four went to number one, despite not nobody watching the programme. So we, well, it's true. Um, so we, uh, got to be honest about these things. Um, although it was a good little show. Um, so, so, so it was, what that shows is the power. The well, power it, it means the book club's have. out there. It's a, yes. Yeah. No. Uh, where there is where there is great power, of course, you can be open to to um, to people trying to manipulate. Are you, you writing in, a book, Amy? In certain ways. <laughs> well, you see, that, that's it. How do you keep yourselves free from every Tom, Dick, and Harry who says, "Oh, please recommend mine"? Well, that, I mean, it doesn't actually work like that because actually the books are sort of forwarded by the publishers to um, uh, W. H. Smith, w. H. Smith mm. um, and then then they forward us. Um, a, a, a long large list. selection, a long list of books to choose from. And the criteria and is, it's got to be a cracking read. I mean, it's got to be literate, obviously. Um, it's got to be well written, but it's got to be a great story. That was always the criteria, and it can, that means it can be anything. It can but it's be very a... subjective, isn't it? So, you know, what, well, what I don't know. You I think th is a good read, or you think mm. is a good read? Well, I don't know. I think there's. I, I think there are rules. Really, I, th I think you can. I mean, we've because we've been doing the book club for so long, and because we're both avid readers anyway, I think you can know. I mean, I. Obviously, there's a kind of gender divide between the mm. kind of books mm. that men like, the kind of books that women like. And we're no different. I mean, there's a, mm. a, a, you like slightly more factual ones than I do. I That's probably point, like yeah. more emotional you know, stories kind of thing. And we, we acknowledge that about each other, but we can both recognise a good book, even if it isn't exactly the kind of book for us. And we, we didn't argue about these at all, did we? Well, Astonishingly. We, 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 we spent the whole summer re reading, we're writing our novels Where as well. Where do you so get the time? Well, we well, don't you, do a daily read... show anymore. We don't do a daily well, you show read, anymore. You, you, what, 200 books over the summer? I haven't read 200 books in my life. Oh. Do, do 200 books? That's we, what you no, had we read. didn't read 200. No, it wasn't no, no, 200. no, no, no. I think about 200 were submitted by the publishers to the, to, to the bookshop. Uh, we ended up with reading about 30, and we had to cut that down to six of, on the list. But actually, they were, and I'm not just saying this, they were so good, we ended up phoning the, the, the company and saying, look, can we make it eight? No. Because <laughs> they're so, and they said, all right, so, so we've launched eight books. And seven of them are novels. Uh, one of them's a factual book about a um, thing called Operation Mincemeat was, you'll remember the film, The Man Who Never Was. Yes. A huge intelligence scam mm. in the Second World War. Brilliant story. That, that's the only factual. And there are, there, there's a book about a serial killer. Can I, give me 30 seconds to tell you the story, because it's brilliant. It's called The Snowman by a guy called Joe Nesbo. Who, who are they calling the new Stig Larsson, but he's yeah. better than Stig Larsson, he really is. And his story is... He's Norwegian. He's Norwegian. this dark Scandinavian and his, and murder his, his thing. His story is about Harry Hood, who's, um, who's an, we got the pronunciation from him yesterday. He's a Norwegian murder squad detective. And he studied serial killers in America, this guy, and he comes back to Oslo and he notices that there's a pattern about women going missing there. And he says, we've got a serial killer here. And all his mates say, no, 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 it's Norway. You don't have serial killers. He said, I'm telling you, this is a serial killer. And what it is, it's a guy who, on the first snowfall of the winter every year, which is about late November, he abducts a woman, butchers her sadistically, uh, and he leaves a, a, a trademark behind. And it's a snowman that he builds in her garden. And he builds it very close to the window where he's been spying on her looking Ooh. in. He builds it very tall and big, leaning forward very close, always facing into the window, with black coal eyes and looking sort of stick arms looking in. It's bloody terrifying. Um, you'll never build a snowman again when you read the book. Mm. Um, and uh, it's, it's quality, quality writing, film. all of them. Yeah. It That'll could be easily be a film or a yeah. series. Yeah. Not, it is, not yeah. only have you been spending the summer reading other people's books, but you're both writing I your do. own, yeah. aren't you? She's doing really well. She's, she's well ahead of me. You she writes at four in the morning. I, I, she's a stranger to the bedroom. I wish you'd stop saying that. I write at four, four in the morning. She's really. obviously disappointed. <laughs> That'll be tomorrow's headline. Yeah, I know, I know. I write at four in the morning about once a fortnight. I mean, it just... Right. Um, the, the reason I do like to work at night is actually because I just love that feeling of being completely cocooned, completely on yes. my own, you know, um, I find I just work best that way. Or you're a vampire, <laughs> or a vampire. one or the other, <laughs> yes, and this is a supernatural book, isn't it? It's a ghost story. Ghost story, I it's love a ghost, a ghost story. It's a ghost story, uh, but it's also very rooted in, uh, it's also a proper story, isn't it? Oh, it's God, not, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's not Larry Fairy. It's a proper it's, story. It's really good, I, and I would say that, but actually I wouldn't, because if it wasn't good, I'd shut up, because I'd be embarrassed. It's good. I've, so I've, I was going to say, you know. pass bits of chapters to each other. We talk to each other about our books, yeah, I'm writing a totally different book, but yeah, we sort of cross-reference plots and things. 
is. Yeah. We sit there. Talking of tomorrow's headlines, there's one, of, there's one about Judy and me on front of Bella, I think it is, and I just saw it this morning getting petrol. It says, Judy's back. And then under the big red letters, and Richard's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, ours that we've had uh, cracks, week. cracks appearing in our relationship, but the best one we've had this summer is Ruth's honeymoon baby. <laughs> <laughs> Which was actually, I just had a bit too much <laughs> bread over the weekend. You're laughing so hard there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. A bit too much but laughter you there. these women's uh, magazines these days, these mad headlines mm. on the front, usually about you or yep. us or Fern mm -hmm. or, you know, Fiona. Loose and all women. Mm -hmm. All loose women. Yeah. And, and the headlines scream something incredible. And you open to the page, and there's nothing about the headline yes. on the well, for, for you, Judy, they're obsessed with your health, of course. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, for, for a very sick woman, you're, you're looking you're looking well. <laughs> I have to say, you're looking well on it. I know, I'm, love, I'm really happy. I'm having She's a She's got great two time. nurses in attendance, you should say, <laughs> standing behind, the, that, <laughs> yeah. behind the camera there. So is that... But are you enjoying retirement? I have yeah. to say, my mother said to me yesterday, she said, I said, she said, who's on the programme tomorrow? I said, Richard and Judy. She said, whatever happened to them? <laughs> she said, well, here, here they are. Here um, they are. I am. I, I'm. I'm. I, Richard's doing more than me. I'm. I'm kind of at the moment turning everything down because I just. I really want a break from telly. You know. I remember once talking to you know uh, Mary Parkinson, Michael Parkinson's yeah. wife, ages ago. She used to be on the telly. She used to do a show actually with him. I think. Yeah. yeah. Doing yeah. 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 Thing. And then she stopped doing it. And she said to me once a long time ago. She said, "I always thought I'd find it incredibly difficult to walk away from television, but actually." It's the easiest and best thing I've ever done. And I know exactly what she means. I mean, the lack of, I mean, you know, this show's absolutely lovely. I adore it. It's lovely coming back and all that. But the lack of the getting off that daily uh, stressful uh, run, you know, I mean, it, it's great. It's I, wondered if, I wondered if I'd miss it, because I'm, I'm quite driven, you know, and I've got lots of energy. And I wondered if, if getting off that daily hamster wheel would, would leave me sort of in, in want of exercise, as it were. But not, I mean, I've, I've honestly, honestly, although I love this morning and I love the Channel 4 show, I've had the best year the, the last year. I mean, I've, yes. I've made documentaries, um, I'm joining Radio 2, um, I'm, I'm making a Who Do You Think You Are in a yes. month. On all of these things, I couldn't have done when yes. I was on the five day a week. Have so they yeah. told you much about the Who Do You Think You no, Are? No, they won't they, tell you all anything. All they've said is they phoned up about a month ago, having done about five months of research, and you never know if they're going to do you or not. They, you know, they approach you and say, Would you like to be on Who Do You Think You Are? And you go, Of course. And they say, Well, we might call you and say, Your ancestors are really dull. Happened to Michael Parkinson talking yeah. to me. Okay, um, but anyway, they phoned me up and said, we found out something amazing in your family's past. It's going to yes. blow your socks off. We're doing it. So, yeah. Okay. We look forward to You're it. You're doing yeah. that, but not doing Strictly. Well, I no. can't. It's at the same not time. Not yet. No. Not yet. OK. Bridget and Judy, lovely. Thank you very lovely much indeed. Lovely to see you. you. And we'll be back after this. Don't go away.